You guys have no idea how excited I am for this video. I mean, yeah, you probably do because I know you guys were just as excited as me. But for today's video, I am going to be reviewing and showing you how I got this look using the new uh, Pat McGrath Labs Mothership 8 Divine Rose 2 palette. I'll also be mentioning some other things about other items in the collection as well. So if you're interested in hearing my thoughts, seeing this look and all of that good stuff, then just keep watching. <laughs> I feel like it was definitely about time that Mother came out with another Mothership palette. I have been waiting, you guys, and let me tell you, I was not disappointed. So we all were eagerly awaiting Pat McGrath's Divine Rose collection. So I purchased some thing of things, and I'm going to show you what I already own. Before I get into the nitty gritty on the palette, I do want to talk about the collection a little bit and other important details that I think you guys might find helpful. Right now, if you go on her website, there is a section for the entire Divine Rose collection. This has released, we've all fought for it, but basically in this collection, what we have here is of course the ever so coveted Divine Rose 2 palette and then also in this collection she re-released the original Divine Rose palette. Now you had options of packaging which I thought was really neat and which was why I was like ready to go and fight some people for this palette. She offered the Divine Rose 2 in this mirrored pink packaging but what was also really special was she also offered the original Divine Rose palette which was a smash hit apparently. So many people love this palette. She offered it in just this really pretty pink packaging. It normally comes in black if you aren't familiar so you could get the Divine Rose 1 in this gorgeous pink packaging and then the Divine Rose 2 in this mirrored pink packaging. Now of course I did already own the original Divine Rose palette in the black packaging. I decided to give it to my mom because packaging is everything to me and I needed to have it in pink. And a lot of you guys definitely had to have the pink packaging too because especially for this guy, the pink sold out in minutes. It was crazy. Right now at this current moment looking at the website, the pink original Divine Rose seems to be available. The Divine Rose too, both the black and the pink packaging are sold out. Divine Rose in the black packaging is still available. The pink bundle that I purchased is out of stock but the bundle was great because you got a small percentage off. You saved a little bit of money but so right now it's tough to get your hands on this palette. Also in the collection she released some lip sets. I did not purchase anything from the lips. I was more so focused on. I also had the majority of the lip collection so I'll show you. What makes the lip items in this collection special is that they have the special Divine Rose packaging. So everything's gonna look like the new Divine Rose 2 box. And I'll show you like the packaging of the stuff that I have. It's just her normal packaging, but I have the same colors. I believe none of these are new. You can buy Lip Trio bundles for $80 if you're interested. There's two lip glosses, two lip liners, and two lipsticks. I only had one of the lip liners, which was buff. It's just a really light pink lip liner kind of color. Really pretty, kind of very similar to my lip color. I had both of the lipsticks that she offered and the first one is Christy. Now this I got in one of her little mini holiday sets. I had Christy. Christy fell on the ground. This is what happens when you buy these cheap little things. I need to sanitize this. That's wonderful. Uh, let me swatch her for you. I thought she felt pretty unstable in there, but Christy is the lipstick that's on my lips. And then here is the swatch of Christy lipstick. Then we have Soft Core. And Soft Core is one of my favorite lipsticks from Pat. I think it's just the most beautiful, pretty pinky kind of color. This is a little bit more poppy than Christy. It has a little bit more purple to it as well. The first shade here is Christy. And then you see it gets brighter at Soft Core. And then I only had one of the lip glosses. And this one is Divine Rose. The other one is Peach Perversion, which I guess is more peachy. I don't, uh, yeah. But Divine Rose is on my lips as well. It's just a gorgeous color that, of course, goes with the theme of the collection. As far as shipping, for me, I personally didn't have any trouble. I usually seem to get pretty lucky, knock on wood. 
with my Pat McGrath orders and it's strange because my mom also ordered the Divine Rose 2 palette same time that I did. We were literally next to each other and my order came today and she hasn't even got a shipping confirmation so that's weird. I don't, I don't know but I just, I got lucky. I did and I'm so happy that means I can bring you the tutorial as soon as possible. Now that that stuff is out of the way, let's get into the exciting part, the nitty gritty, the palette itself. Now if you are curious about comparisons or anything like that I'm going to link my friend Alicia from Kiki Sweats review down below first of all she goes into depth about everything that you need to know about this palette and she does the greatest job with comparison swatches so I'm gonna leave it to the expert go check her video out for comparison swatches of how the colors in this palette are going to compare to colors already in her line let's get into it let's start off with the major details of this palette so like I said mothership 8 divine rose 2 as far as I'm aware from what I've seen on Pat McGrath's lives where she talked about it this palette whether or not it was limited edition was a pending decision online right now it says that it's limited edition but she said there was potential that it wouldn't be I'm assuming depending on how it sells what the people's reaction are if you're loving it make sure you express that to the brand so that it becomes permanent this palette is currently out of stock but if you would like to be put on the wait list I will put the link down below and you can enter your email to be notified of when this will be restocked so if you aren't aware Pat McGrath mothership prices I mean oof it hurts a little bit. It does, even now, for me. I'm like, <sighs> but this is $125. Normally, she has a discount code where you can get 10 to 20% off, so make sure you keep an eye out for that. For this palette, I believe it was Bloom 10, so I did get an additional 10% off. But since I did order the bundle, it was $230 for both of these. With the 10% off, it was about $200, which I am mad about. That's like a decent deal for what you're getting. Also, something important to know about this is this is the first palette from her line that is described as an artistry palette. I'm going to assume that has to do with the formulations. The hot pink color in here is technically not eye safe. It will stain your eyelids. So that is why they can't market it as an eye shadow palette because it's not eye safe. Personally, I don't have any irritants with any of that. I do notice some staining, but it's not the end of the world. So for me, this is an eyeshadow palette, but you can also do a lot of other fun stuff, and you'll see that when I explain more about this palette. Of course, this palette is also offered in black. Why would you get the black when you could get this? I think the pink mirrored packaging is totally worth the wait for it to restock. I imagine this packaging, though, will be limited edition. If they do decide to keep this palette, it will be only available in black. But if I didn't have a YouTube channel and this pink sold out, I would wait for it to be restocked. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna start off with the artwork here. Just, this is part of the Pat McGrath Labs experience. Really beautiful. Let me compare it to the original Divine Rose packaging for you guys. So the original Divine Rose, much more light. I feel like this is much more glam, crown, queen. Oh, beautiful. It's similar artwork to some already remaining palettes, but of course not in this color story. Just the Pat McGrath experience, of course, of course. Boom, then you have the packaging, the same packaging, just pink mirror. It's incredible, but when you open it up, it is just the black background, which I can appreciate because I can imagine these colors being weird against this pink mirrored background. And in the palette, of course, you are getting her original 10 pan layout here. Uh, from my interpretations in here, you're getting two mattes, four shimmers, and four of her special shades, and then you're only going to get one of her really special super glittery shades that don't tend to have as much of a background color but it's all about the glitter and glam and then you have a new formula for her which is a trichrome and as you can see just with this angle how much it's shifting of course indie brands they did it first but i am happy to see her do it because if any mainstream brand was going to dive into trichromes i would expect it to be miss pat mcgrath incredible shade of i think this is the shade sextrovert that caught everybody's eye in this palette i believe the intentions behind this palette was to take her original divine rose which was a huge success in her line and make a crazy older sister here so these are absolutely related they play off each other well but they are very very different palettes for a different type of person if you ask me if you're a very neutral toned kind of person you might just want to stick with divine rose the original because 
Oh my gosh, it's so bland when you look at this palette, which has so much pops, so much richness in the shades, just completely opposite spectrums, but also the same. She did a really good job of making these palettes a family, but like one's the subdued sister and the other one is the crazy sister. As far as swatching and how these shades went for me, something about the formulas in here seem to be really refined. I did not have any issues as far as swatching goes. The quality was consistent across the board, the formulations. Some of them seemed a little bit more buttery smooth than normal. It's just something about the quality in here, I feel like stepped up her brand a little bit and that was hard to do because she had amazing quality before. I will say swatching, I thought this shade right here, the Extreme Burgundy shade was a little bit patchy. I had to go over it a few times, but on the eyelid, that wasn't the problem. This shade seems a little bit sheer, but when you apply it is really when it pops. I also have this shade as a highlight beautiful as a highlight and you don't need to dig into the shade or anything. It applies very smooth to the skin. The quality of this shade right here, which is called Eleganza, guys, it is so creamy. It feels wet when you touch it. It'll run all the way down your arm, extremely pigmented. Then you get into Bronze Rosé and Gold Lust. These two are her special shades. They have a little bit more of a dry and slick feel when you apply them, but they're just the same exact special formulas from Pat. Gold Lust right here, this golden shade, it did exist in one of her kits from a while back and that was kind of in the beginning of her brand. She's completely kind of changed directions as far as from the times when those kits were out. So technically this is a repeat but very few people are going to have it. This one right here, Divine Dust, did not swatch as beautifully as Eleganza but it wasn't an issue. Also something I would like to note is I do notice the more I swatch it, it seems to kind of change texture in that it looks like hard pan is in the pan but you still get the pigment I don't think that's going to be an issue as far as application but yeah I wish it was just as creamy as this and that's not saying this isn't creamy it is but this shade is out of this world rose seduction is a hard color to formulate I think she made it shimmery because it's a little bit more easier to work with when it's shimmery and it's fine because you'll find with her shimmers you can use them kind of as mattes as well she did a great job with this shade I also use it as a pop of blush I started off with this color and then I use this color but I'll go into that in a second and then of course the trichrome it feels really slick and beautiful very pigmented you don't even need a glitter glue with this shade and it's whew. and then this shade is kind of her classic special glittery shades that sometimes you just want to put all over your eyelid once you finish your look to really get that Pat McGrath effect so yeah now that I've talked about all of the shades uh yeah I love them for sure all of them seem to be absolute amazing quality as far as my thoughts on the color story it's a huge difference from the original Divine Rose. It is so bright and I think if you are uncomfortable with brighter kind of looks you might not really like this palette as much. Divine Rose is just really great for neutral lovers and though this still plays on that peachy rosy kind of theme this takes it up 10 notches and that I really like. I mean if you're bolder with makeup you will really enjoy this palette. I said this I had a feeling that this palette was going to be my favorite palette. I can't speak on that yet because I've only used this palette once but it's good, you guys. It's really, really good. The only thing that's kind of setting me back is I feel like with Bronze Seduction, my personal favorite, it's more neutral, it's more wearable, and you can do a little bit more as far as variety in the shades. With this palette, you do kind of have one color story here, so a lot of the looks that you get are going to look very similar. They're going to be in the same family. I mean, you have a lot of rose tone here. There's differences in the undertones, of course, and you can get different looks. I'm not saying that. But compared to her other palettes where the color stories are a little bit more across the board This one sticks pretty close to each other, which is a good thing or a bad thing It's a bad thing if you don't like this color story If you're not into those rose hot pink kind of looks This probably isn't the palette for you, but if you do enjoy these looks, it's a great palette You're getting a lot of dimension very unique shades and really pretty looks But they're all gonna lie within the same tone So that's the only thing that I would say could be off-putting to some people other than that, you know, if you like this color story, you are golden. This is an amazing palette, of course. 
as expected. So now let's move on to the tutorial so you can see what colors I use to create this look and I also talk about the formulations and my favorite ways to apply them as I go. If you would like to see a second tutorial, make sure you join me this Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I will be pulling this baby out and doing another tutorial on my live with you guys. So make sure you save the time and date for that. But anyways, let's get into how I got this look. Morphe Y17 and I'm going into Naked Blush and we are going to apply this baby to the inner half of the crease. I think this is the perfect transition shade for every look. They did a really good job of putting this in the palette. It's just really the perfect shade, honestly. It's going to complement all looks that you can get with this palette. As you can see, it's Stunning. I'm gonna put this on as blush. With an Esam S33, we're going into Extreme Burgundy. This shade swatched a little bit patchy, but as far as application, it literally worked beautifully. I have no problems blending this shade. I would recommend packing, pressing, and then going in to blend. So as you can see, I'm kind of creating the shape here at first, like so, blending this out a little bit. Use this shade sparingly. It is quite pigmented. And then I'm going in with the Naked Blush brush that I used, and we're gonna blend this guy out and soften it. For a fun pop, I'm going in with my MAC 217 in Rose Seduction. This shade is so fun, it really makes the palette pop. And I'm going to apply this to the center of my crease to fuse those two colors together and to really amplify this look, y'all. It's incredible. Make sure we're going back and blending. You guys know I couldn't do this tutorial without Sextra Terrestrial, which is the trichrome, as you can see. Look at that shift. It's really incredible. It's such a soft formula as well. I will say the shift, it can be a bit odd on the eyes just because sometimes I feel like the color does pull a bit murky when it gets to that green and a little bit dark, but I still love it because it's just so fun. And I know Indie Brands did it first, of course. She did a good job with her formula. So I'm trying to see, you see how it gets dark in certain areas of my eye that is from this shade. So this shade is going to naturally add definition to your eye. Anywhere you put the shimmer, it's gonna have that shift. So if you don't want the shift to be this high, darkening this area, don't blend it up with your finger. I'm blending it up pretty high because I do want that shift. I want the whole look to be kind of fused together. With a Morphe M507, I'm going back into Rose Seduction. This shade can be very intimidating but truly I really really like it. I think the quality of it's really good. It's interesting because it's not too powdery or anything like a lot of times this could be or it's not too patchy because it is a shimmer shade but as you can see as I run it along my lower lash line the fact that it's a shimmer doesn't change anything. You can still blend it out as you would matte and it looks just fine. I'm taking a bit of extreme burgundy which is that dark color and I'm just lining the outer part of my lower lash line just to bring a little bit of definition down. We're going to take some some of Skin Show Rose Opal. This is going to act as the lower brow highlight and then of course the inner corner. This is a more subtle shade if you're looking for a more wearable look. Consider putting this all over the eye with Naked Blush. It'll be gorgeous. Next up we're taking Bronze Rose. We're going to put this on the inner part of the lower lash line just for some added dimension and it really pulls together with the gold inner corner highlight that we're going to put on top and it adds extra dimension to the eyelid. What I love about the Pat McGrath shades specifically is how beautifully they layer over top of one another. So it's really just like art. Just adding those little extra elements makes a big difference, especially when the light hits. Now we're going into Gold Lust right here. So this is the one that was in one of her old kits from a very long time ago. But I think this pulls together the lower lash line and it adds some warmth to the look. It's really, really gorgeous. And then of course, just for some extra fun, we're taking Astral Pink Moon, which is a pretty sheer glittery shade. This is mostly going to add dimension and glitters and shine to the look. And I'm putting that right on top of the gold. This is the look. I'm going to finish the rest of my face and I'll be back. So continuing on with this look, after I put on my lash, 
lashes and liner, I actually wanted to use a couple of these shades on my face as well. I took the shade Naked Blush, which honestly this is going to be one of my favorites and most used in this palette. It's just so versatile. And I use this as a base color for my blush. If you're more on the fair side like me, make sure you tap your brush off. It blends out very easily, but it is an eyeshadow and you can tell, so just use a light hand. And then to add not only a little bit of shine to my cheek, but to also make it pop even brighter with my brighter look. I took some of Rose Seduction right here and I put that just like a tiny, tiny little bit on the apples of my cheek and I mean a tiny bit and I blended that out. And then finally, I took a little bit of Skin Show Rose Opal and I used this as a highlighter. And you guys, I'm actually very impressed with how that Rose Opal did on my cheek as a highlighter. It's beautiful. It's not too dark. It's not emphasizing texture. She could sell this color specifically in this formula as a highlighter. I wouldn't even know it was in an eyeshadow palette originally. It is a beautiful formula as a highlighter. I just, I love my cheeks and I love that I could get this from this palette. So there you go, even more versatility and it's going to make the look more cohesive as well. I mean, that's really all I have for today's video. I'm at a loss for words because it's just really good, you guys. I think it's definitely one of my absolute favorites from her. It's one of the best jobs that she's done. She's done an amazing job at curating this pop palette. I think some people would interpret her palettes as not necessarily wearable, but I feel like in all her palettes, for the most part, she has very wearable elements. I would say of the Mothership palettes, this one has the least everyday wearable elements just because you have all these pops here, but you can totally make it wearable. That's not an issue, but if you aren't comfortable with that, I would suggest looking into the original Divine Rose since that is available. It's much more muted, but if you are more adventurous and you want fun pops, this is a great way to go. It's one of her best that she's curated in my opinion. That is all I have for today today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and found it helpful. I hope to see you guys this Sunday so that we can gush on this palette some more. So if you aren't subscribed to my channel already, make sure you take the time to do so and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.